a session for a client. I'm going to go ahead and read the goals here and get started. Okay. Hi, Abby. Thank you for sharing your gifts with me. I have been actively exploring spiritual healing of all kinds for many years. However, I have not been able to clear my depression and anxiety. For years, I have been right on the edge of shifting and giving birth to my new self. For some reason, I have not been able to, despite trying many, many modalities. I have a growing fear of being unable to do this for myself and have a decreasing desire to try. Self-loathing and an increasing resistance have led me to wonder if there is a trauma I still need to clear. Ultimately, I understand I need to forge my own path. There's just this invisible wall I can't seem to find a move uh, uh, to find and move out of the way. Love and light. <laughs> All right. Thank you for everything you've shared here. Thank you for everything you've shared here. Because this life lesson, it's almost like there's so many stepping stones that it has guided you through, even all these different healing modalities. I can imagine you're exhausted from this process. I know a lot about depression and anxiety because I've struggled with depression, especially a lot in my life. And I know how sometimes I experience it even still and I don't really know where it's coming from so for me I just I've kind of come to a place with it where I just accept accept it and I just have to experience it I have to breathe I take walks and I just allow it to just be and so even for myself I haven't necessarily conquered it but I feel I have and I feel I've I've learned so much about emotions um, about patience, about the power of love, um, all kinds of psychic development in there for myself, um, and also acceptance, an odd level of acceptance that I never thought I'm, I'm always looking for ways to conquer and transform and let go and move on, right? Um, so why is that still linger, you know? But let's see what's going on in your energy field um, let's see what we can find out about this if there's still some trauma under there I mean this could be quite a message and maybe there's something obviously here for you <laughs> but there might be something that might teach me you know and I want to thank you so much for um, being open to share because it might ju not just be for you <laughs> or me but everybody you know so we're all going to learn something today and we're all going to become transformed today <laughs> from what we learn. And thank you again so much for sharing. I really liked the way that you expressed all these details. And it gave me a lot of perspective kind of on the timeline of what you've been going through in, with this lesson. <sighs> okay. I'm just really just zoning in here. Just really breathing through and experiencing just your language style and again, the details. Okay, I'm ready. I'm going to relax now and let's see where this takes us. Mm. The first image that comes to me, there's a very large spider. And it's kind of hairy, kind of not hairy. So it's not necessarily like a tarantula. Seems like it has a web um, where you could see the web exposed. But it, it sort of hides in the shadow. But yet you can still see it. I mean, it's not fully hidden. It's kind of showing its spider web. It's showing itself, but it's also removed in a way. And it's in the shadow. 
I'm trying to decide if I want to go in that direction or if I want to wait and see what else comes to me. Now, where this spider exists is over there. So it's sort of in the upper right-hand corner of the scene. Now, in the center, there's just this uh, circle, and it's really just a tunnel. Like, I could go through it. And so I can go into this tunnel. I can go over there, see what the spider thing is all about. This tunnel has kind of like a gray light to it. There is light. I can see that there's light here. It's kind of gray in color. And then if we if we were to say there's sections, like let's say there's a bigger circle where the spider is in a section, there may be a section over here and a section over there and a section over there, but it's all kind of in the dark. And then we have this circle, which is like a tunnel to go through and that's gray. All right, the next thing is, The next thing is I'm standing on a cliff and I'm underground and it's quite a vast cave. <laughs> it's a really big place. And what I saw is the spider and you know everything as I described it is a lot further away now than it was originally. And I'm standing here and I'm deciding where do I go next? What direction do I take? What do I do? It's almost like you need an unexpected event because as I stand here at the edge of the cliff in this giant vast underground cave like it's a giant cavern so even this cliffside like it's just a, a fall to who knows how far down in a big black cave under you know underground um, so as you're standing here um, I also feel myself standing here right so we're working together here um, but <laughs> I'm kind of coming up behind and pushing you off the cliff without you realizing it. Like I, I feel like there has to be some kind of surprise event, something that you didn't expect, something that you didn't know was coming. It's almost like um, you've used some analytical skills, some clarity, um, some deciphering tools. Um, it's almost like you figured it all out, except what you haven't figured out, it's only the only way to really access it is if you're startled, you're surprised. Um, what is going to surprise you anymore? <laughs> what is going to surprise you? So if you already know everything in a way, like you've already been introduced to so much, you've already seen so many different angles, you've worked through so much of this, um, it's like you've learned the language, you've, you've seen it all in a way, okay? That you need something to take you off guard in order for you to access a new level of information. You have a certain level of control. Because even when I, I just come up behind you to push you off the cliff without you expecting it, um, I see that you do fall, but I see that you reverse time and you stand strong, you hold your ground, and you don't allow that to happen. And so again, um, how am I to surprise you if you're in control? How am I to surprise you if you've been introduced to everything? So I have you face me. And we're going to look eye to eye at each other. Hmm. I'll just describe the image. I'm not, um, it just is, it doesn't, it's not like very energetically tangible. Like, um, there's really something here. Okay. It just shows itself to me like this. Um, so I see when I look into your eyes, your face starts to change and I start to see, um, it becomes like, like your eye sockets and your brain and everything inside your face is being eaten by worms. Okay. And you kind of grown used to the worms, almost like numb in a way. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> Hmm. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything I've seen thus far and I'm going to push it over there. Right now I'm listening, okay? There's a lot I could talk about, but I feel very strongly like I need to really pay attention here. As though there's vibrations that I am lit I'm tuning in for. And so I'm just going to just sit here in the darkness within yourself and I'm going to listen. Something beautiful is taking place. Something I didn't expect. I am within the darkness within yourself. And I'm simply here with you. Listening. And being present in this darkest place within you. And I welcome you to sit with me here and to feel safe and comfortable in this dark place. You could say, you know, I would suspect you would say that you would be familiar with it if you've struggled with depression. You kind of know what a dark place might feel like, right? But it doesn't feel as though you've just sat here in this particular dark place. And there's love in this darkness. And we, we're just kind of sitting here just being present with each other. And um, I'm starting a campfire, okay? And there's white wood being used. I know what to do next. I'm going to call upon the first most beautiful spirit um, to introduce themselves in this most darkest place within you and for you to start to feel full. All right? The love is within yourself. And it is present in a way that you can feel it now. And where it may have felt empty or it may have felt avoid or may have felt like <sighs> the path that <laughs> um, you can't seem to transform completely. Um, let's do it this time. And you can do it because you can feel the presence of so much love inside yourself. This is moving energy in your heart. This is moving energy in the back of your head. There's, this is moving energy in your third eye. So again, I'm going to be silent. And I encourage you to open your eyes and to see and to receive this love. And if it's hard to receive this love, then let's talk about what is creating that friction. I will say it's getting heavier and heavier, particularly in the heart, the emotional gut. Um, I do feel a lot of heaviness on the back side. I feel a lot of exhaustion starting to overwhelm the back of my head, above my head, kind of coming across my third eye as well. It just feels like it's getting heavier and heavier, okay? This is really good. This is a venting. An energetic venting. All right. I show you 
how to do what I do. And I show you, okay, where I want you to sh see a door inside yourself and I want you to open that door. There's a beautiful spirit on the other side. Talk to me about who is on the other side of this door. I'm asking you to do it inside yourself and I'm here. I want to see what you do. You are doing it, but it's kind of like we're stuck in a friction. Like, um, um, you're, you're doing it, but it's like, um, it kind of, it kind of goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It never just follows all the way through. There's just like a little bit of resistance going on here. Now we need, need to move through this resistance. Okay. It's like, just like an energy turbulence here. So I'm going to ask you, um, what's up? What's going on right now? Relax, breathe, this is easy. Allow yourself to open this door of your own creation and who is on the other side of that door. almost like you're fighting with yourself between is it dark or is it light is it hate or is it love like um it's kind of like dark light <laughs> it's like that okay <laughs> um and then it creates frustration because you're gonna have to decide and you're gonna know inside your heart and there is no right or wrong, so just tell me. Just tell me. What is it? <sighs> A lot of this anger, believe it or not, is coming from the crown chakra and the third eye. Interesting. That means you got you got solar plexus chakra energy all the way up here <laughs> in your mind's eye and your higher mind. So you're kind of you're you're channeling emotion through these um these chakras. I might be a little bit weird because you're venting so much and it is anguish, it's frustration, it's anger, it's pissed off, it's sick of this, you know? It's like that, and plus we're stuck, okay? Like, <laughs> is it good? Is it bad? You know, this is easy stuff. This is no big deal. Just make up, you know, just make a choice and then let's follow through with that choice, you know? Like, stop being in control of what comes. Just let it be. <laughs> <laughs> You're venting a lot of just, oh my God. God, has this been frustrating. <sighs> okay, let's try this again. You got this. You got this. Okay, now let's try this again. I want you to open the door and tell me who's on the other side. You have to tell me. I'm not going to tell you. You tell me. What comes to you? Okay, you're telling me. Um, it's a conflict. It's you, and you look kind of like a, a monster in a way. It's a really unique looking monster. It's got a, a human figure inside. Um, so if you were to draw kind of like, let's just say a, di a big dinosaur, but it's, it's kind of uh, more cartoonish than that. It's really wide. It's got like blue and silvery yellow metallic stripes. It's got um, sharp spikes. It even has kind of like, I don't know, ears like a bear <laughs> with big sharp teeth. Um, but then I see this big kind of monster um, and then I see the, the, a human being um, kind of cookie-cuttered into its form. 
And I see, so you and this monster are one, okay? You and the monster are one. Um, but it, it's, it, this is the easy version, easy on the eyes to look at, okay? Um, when you let yourself go and you let the images come, it gets a lot more um, gruesome looking. The next image is basically a skull and there's something on it and then a sledgehammer goes and kind of cracks and splatters this all over and it's basically I see again um, just a skull and like juices and and like it looks like barbecue sauce to be honest it's like dripping all over but it's sticky and it's slimy and it's dark and it's gross you know that's kind of what it's showing me right now. That's what you're showing me is on the other side of the door. Obviously, we're open to um, beautiful beings to come into this dark place inside yourself to fill you with light and love. And this is perfect, actually. We want authenticity. We want legit stuff here. If it needs to be gross for starters, then let's it'll it's going to just be gross. No big deal. All right, we'll work with that. I say you're doing a really good job. You are pissed. You don't like. You you're angry. You hate yourself. You, um, it's kind of just coming out like this. Like the negative self talk is just circulating back into you, um, and it's turning you into this monster. And you keep showing me images, really gross images of like um, like gross substances that are oozing down skulls. Okay. And there's also like a splattering, um, something in somebody's hand. Like, I don't know if it's like a gross uh, rotten heart that's being squished and it's just like moldy and maggoty and juicy and nasty and barbecue saucy, but it's like real horror show, okay? I ask you, do you love yourself? Like, let's be honest. It's okay. Just, just, do you love yourself? Let's see. You um, show me a knife and you want to cut yourself out of that monster. And that is you saving yourself and you want to bring yourself through the doorway back to yourself. I'm going to show you something. I say, you are the monster, you are the skull, you are the barbecue sauce, you are the gross stuff, okay? Um, so we can't cut anything out of anything else to save it and bring it back to yourself because... Now you're separating yourself from yourself and all the stuff is you anyway. Even the door is you. Um, the conflict with yourself is you. Um, is it light? Is it not light? Like it's all you. So, um, so let's try this again, okay? Yeah, you have just so much unresolved anger. So much like, I mean, it's just a lot of hurt. And when, when there's a lot of hurt... Um, it becomes anger, you know? Um, I feel like anger is kind of the result of other emotions, unresolved emotions. So, um, patient for a really long time, now I'm pissed. <laughs> How dare you make me patient forever, <laughs> you know? It's like, I'm sad for a really long time, now I'm sick of being sad. You lied to me, you, I was waiting. It could become anything, like, like you can have this, like, emotion, and that emotion over time, it, it can transform into frustration and anger. So anger is kind of like the result of another emotion that just, it just, maybe it's lagged on for too long, you know, and, and then it creates that anger. Or when we don't know how to just let the emotion be and it just kind of develops from there, you know. Are we angry at ourselves? Are we angry at the situation? It's just anger, okay? You're very, very worn out just from what we've accomplished so far. You're very exhausted. Like, I mean, we've done a lot here. So I can feel you're just, just like very tired from all of this so far. I 
I tell you I'm really proud of you because you're choosing to take the, these matters into your own hands, you know, um, choosing to see what is through that door, um, which is seeing into the depths of yourself. And just tell me what's there without judgment. And be honest with me too about how you feel about everything. That is also perfect. You are really tired, but I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not gonna do the work for you. For some reason, um, I'm supposed. <laughs> for some reason, I I'm ask. I I've got to keep in nudging you to to keep trying this. You're not going to, to just lay down yet. <laughs> it's not the case with with the other sessions, you know. Sometimes um, that's the route that spirit wants me to take. So I'm supposed to encourage you to try this again. Let's, let's see another, another way. Let's see another way of, of doing things. But I want you to try it. Oh, good. Because you're tired and because I'm not letting you just rest, you, you can't um, be in control. <laughs> um, and you're having a hard time composing yourself and now the monster is becoming you. So the doorway is breaking down and what was on the other side of the door is now shifting. So now it is you. You, you and the monster are here with me at, by the fire. I was like, excellent, excellent. This is great. And, and it's like almost like you losing control, you see? You losing control um, is actually what's going to get you to that next step. Imagine knowing so much and being so clever and so well learned that it, it's almost like very hard to have an innocent perspective again. And it's like you're gonna, uh, like the surprise attack from the back and now you're falling like to the um, unknown, right? Um, or I push you, push you, push you in your energy field to the point that you're so exhausted. You just, you have nothing but instinct left, okay? It's almost like you're going to have to work with the instinct here. And that's what's going to get us to the next level for you. That's pretty incredible, to be honest. That's very rare that I would ever have to push someone to their instincts to help them get through to the next level. <laughs> All right, I got to hold you in there. It's like, it's like trying to stay awake for like 10 days straight. You know, it's almost impossible, but it's like pushing you to the limits of what you're capable of in your energy field. You're really exhausted and you're not really angry because you're too exhausted to be angry and you're disoriented and you're not really a monster because you never really were a monster. And so the monster part is starting to fade away and it's just you sloughing um, down over here and you're just absolutely exhausted and disoriented. And I tell you, I am so ridiculously proud of you. How do you feel now? Because you're quickly coming to your senses. You're not exhausted at all. <laughs> you're like, it, it's a weird spinning thing that is getting into a smaller and smaller circle until I start to see your alignment is shifting. And you're kind of like, whoa, what was that? What just happened? It's like, you just did something amazing is what just happened. Like, you just did something. <laughs> It's pretty cool. All right. You're a lot stronger and self-sufficient. Um, you are aware and you're very clear. Um, you hear very articulately. Like you, your senses have just boosted, okay? You got a major upgrade there. You're, you're on fire. Like you're actually pumped. Uh, you're really pumped up. Okay. Let me see what the next inspiration is, okay? You feel great. You feel really proud of yourself. You're surprised and confused as to what just happened and how that worked. I, I say, I know, like, I, that's not usually the approach I'm called to take, but that's the approach you needed. 
and I, I'm not getting any response yet from the from my guides or anything, so I'm just going to wait, okay? We're just going to chill out and enjoy just this deep, dark place inside yourself and you feeling transformed right now. And I, oh, something's changing. <sighs> okay, this is like the next thing. We're almost into it, okay? We're almost there. <sighs> Has to do with baby spiders, and there's lots of them. Has to do with having hallucinations and feeling like there's spiders crawling all over you, and it's freaking overwhelming. Oh my god. <sighs> Okay, we're acclimating. Everything's going to be just fine. See, you and I, we're kind of interchanging. So you're having, we're shifting and we're entering into another interdimensional space within yourself. And it's like freaking nuts in here. Okay, so all of that is just venting and clearing that energy out of your system and acclimating to, so what? There's a bunch of spiders everywhere. It's no big deal. <laughs> Let's work on this. All right, there's a pretty freak. This is the next thing is like a freaking big deal in here. Like a pissed off spirit guy. <laughs> hmm. I don't even know if he's real or not yet. He could be an illusion. He um, particularly um, is gripping your throat. Like wanting to strangle and suffocate you. And he fucking hates you. Like... Uh, like he he's really articulate with the the bitter um cuss words like I hate you like he's pretty like serious about it okay he really hates you <laughs> and he's choking you and there's something medieval about his appearance and he even has like a metal um helmet and part of it covers his, there's a piece that covers his nose and he's very, um, like, dressed for war, like a medieval knight. But I can see his face, and he has kind of a tall, like, what feels like a taller helmet, a metal helmet that's taller, and then it has a piece that covers his nose. He's not nice at all. I mean, he's really, um... He keeps saying how much he hates you. Like, he really articulates the how much he hates you and he is like grabbing you by the genitals like he's squeezing tight and he's wants to hurt you really really bad it's not about killing you it's just about holding you in a place of severe pain and that in a way helps him feel better about himself as long as you're in severe pain and he is bringing on the pain and you're freaking out about it then we're fine you know what I mean <laughs> all the while there's like million baby spiders everywhere so you can see why there's a lot of like overwhelming energy as we enter into this new space there are some other lifetimes involved here with this and one of them has to do with a hallucination like hallucinating and losing your mind in a hallucination it almost feels like you died in the hallucination I mean, I keep seeing a man screaming um, and screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. And it's like he never stops screaming forever. And he is experiencing pain. He's, a, he's in a hallucination. He's having like what is like real visualizations. Like he's in a real nightmare experience. And he just keeps screaming and screaming and screaming. His body, it's like, it's like he's, he's dead, okay? But he's still alive somehow, screaming forever. And he can't get out of this. He can't ever get out of this. And it's so scary. And I mean, it's like he can feel bones being pulled out of his his legs even. Like they're being pulled out of him. Bones are. And I and I see the the I see this man and he's on his knees screaming and screaming for this to stop. It never stops. 
Um, and I don't see anybody here but himself in a dark place. And he's going through this terrible, um, terrible experience. But when I go into him, it's like, oh my gosh, it's painful. It's emotional. It's terrifying. It's, it's like ripping the soul apart. It's a death. Like it's, it's solutionation is to trigger what would be a spiritual death in a way. Like a death of oneself, like in the screaming forever. It's just, I don't know. It's like we're in an infinite space where this never stops ever. Forever and ever, for every lifetime, past, present, and future, the screaming will go on forever. When I see, so, okay, we're, we're kind of going back to a, another layer where I'm with all the spiders and then this, this like, uh, medieval man who's choking you and <laughs> squeezing your male parts, okay? And you're in so much pain. And he's, he's, uh, it's, he likes to feel dominant. He likes to feel in control. He likes to control you. He likes you when you are suffering. And he's also you. This uh, medieval guy is also you. And he won't let go of you. This you will not let go of you. Okay? The energy wanted to return to the fire where we could talk about this. I'm like, no, no, no. We're going to remain in the event. We're going to remain in the experience and we're going to do this in the midst of this experience. You're starting to puke out blood and you're puking out like cockroaches and insects. And you, you're, you're freaking out. Like, it's almost like the hallucination scene is starting to blend with this other scene where you're being choked and genitals squeezed and you're choking and barfing out cockroaches. And the screaming never ends and the spiders are everywhere. I say, this is you. Tell yourself to freaking stop. Tell yourself to stop. Get a hold of yourself and tell yourself to stop. Let's bring it together here. Let's face this. Okay, this is the next challenge. Because you're, you, you hear me and you're trying and the you that has been choked and, you know, squeezed <laughs> like the pain is never ending. Um... And I go into that pain and there's you on your knees screaming forever in a hallucinated state of like bone breaking terror. Um, so those keep interchanging. All this pain keeps interchanging. And that feels like a real event. It feels like a real life. And it, maybe it was a ceremonial thing. Maybe there was, but it's like your soul stayed <laughs> in the nightmare. So even if you came back in the physical and, and move forward as kind of an enlightened being because you went through a death phase through like um, you had to drink this and then, you know, it's like Batman's story. He, he, had, he had the experience and he had to face his fear. But this was pain. Like this is not facing fear. This is like a full-on torture nightmare hallucination beyond anyone's wildest imagination. I could imagine people would die in that kind of hallucination. Actual heart stopping terror. And you remained in that place. Just me talking about is helping you to kind of come to your senses and we're not jerking in between that hallucination scene and then you being choked and everything. Like it's kind of like, like, like kind of fluttering in between those two. So you're, you're starting to it's slowing down and you're starting to feel whole. You're just starting to feel like you and you're just breathing and the other you, the, the medieval knight uh, version is relaxing his grip. He's, um, it's almost like he himself forgot himself and he's breathing differently and he's starting to see what his choices have been and he's starting to cry actually. And he doesn't understand why he was doing that. Why he was hurting you, which is hurting himself. And he feels the pain of what you've been going through. And it, in a way, it is tormenting to him that he 
was hurting you, which was hurting him. He does. He's literally having kind of a a, a moment here. You're both calm, but you're both kind of confused and you're both trying to understand who you are and what is this and why. And there's exhaustion returning. I'm not, I'm not, we're not going there. We're not going to rest. We need to follow this all the way through. We can do this. <laughs> you, you, uh, fall to your knees all the spiders have disappeared um, it's just kind of an empty space like an empty kind of castle room and um you were the you were the one that was being choked etc you fall to your knees and you're just breathing and crying and the medieval man just disappears and it's just you and you want out so bad you want out of this place so bad you want it to go away you want out so bad and and i just whoa 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 like let's just Let's, let's calm down here. Let's relax. Let's get our senses. Let's stand up. Let's just look around. Oh my god. It's, it's another layer of jacked up stuff, okay? It's, it's really bad. You stand up because the thing is, is you desperately want out. And when you desperately want out of something, you will go knee deep, chin deep, head beneath it. Um, deep like you, you, the only way truly out of anything um, is to not want out at all that is the answer to that riddle is to not want it want to be out because only then do you are you stronger than it it's like um, a bully that wants you to cry that wants you to react that wants you to fight back and you just don't anymore you don't give the bully what it wants and you don't want the bully to do like it's not like I just wish this bully would stop it's just like it's like some weird place where you have this weird epiphany and you change inside and you don't even vibrationally feel even the same relationship with that bully or this this experience you're not struggling with it you're not fighting with it you're not angry you're not emotional you're not sore you're not pissed you're not wondering why this is happening you just there's nothing here anymore for me when you when you finally get to a place where there's nothing where you're just so neutral about it that is when you have <laughs> transformed from the lesson okay so I'm 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 showing you this we don't need to get out we just need to be at peace with everything on ourself like everything is you even this castle space is you like everything is you so you can't escape yourself So we're going to go into the next layer, which is pretty disturbing. So when you stood up in a panic, um, these terrible gross faces started to appear. And they're really wide like um, a frog face, but they were humanoid frog faces. Really like long, wide mouths. Um, and they all look kind of similar. And they're just sort of connected to each other. And it was weird. It was like a... Um, like a potato peeler and little paring knives and they were just peeling your, at your the skin on your legs peeling your kneecaps off like cutting into your legs your knees and just cutting you down cutting you down okay that's the next scene again it makes your throat really vulnerable it makes you want to barf it makes you want to like cough up things and, and it's a frog in your throat it is a frog in your throat and you're gagging on it I just snap my fingers and I say when are you going to be done okay there's more there's a really awful um, bats, basically. They're just black. Um, they're kind of dripping with a black substance on them. And there's lots of bats everywhere. 
these are kind of like demonic or parasitic kind of vibration to them. Again, they may be also an illusion. They may, may be a reflection of yourself. It may not be real parasitic. Like when your vibration shifts and you come into peace and balance with all the collective parts of yourself and all the illusionary versions of yourself and you find that neutral place of total like oneness with the universe and it like takes you to that nirvana level... Um, anything else just disappears. Like there's no, you're in a totally different dimension, totally different energy vibe. There are no energy parasites anywhere. There's no negative energy that's attached. Like you're transformed. Like, so let's go find all the vibrational parts of you that need to be transformed so we can shift dimensionally and you can start to find your way out of this. Okay. Okay, so the bats spit poison into your eyes. And your eyes, they're more it's more than poison, it's more like an acid, and your eyes start to dissolve in your head and you start to scream. I say let's just go there. Like let's just go there with this. Let's just see how bad this can get. Let's go there. Weird it's it's like one of those weird spaces, like the walls are people's faces that are moaning in agony. There's like um, really sharp, incredibly sharp swords that are, there's just bodies that appear that get sliced in all kinds of pieces and then bodies that appear that get sliced in all kinds of pieces and then bodies that appear, it's like over and over and over and over and over and over. It's like a never ending hell. Like, okay, let's see it. Let's see it. You know, eyes are melting out of my sockets. Like all these freaky toad faced people are, are cutting at my knees like let's just see it you know this is energy this is energy and energy just happens to look like this it really is this this bad you know vibrationally i say is any of that real where is this coming from oh boy oh um. like it just never ends like you're just like ah oh, it just never ends like ah. <laughs> it's like you can't get out of the sick maze i mean you just can't get out of the sick maze you know it's like a funhouse maze it's freaking the sick maze okay but it's okay like let's just bring it man what's the next one what's the next image what's the next image what's the next image you will eventually get to a point where you don't need any more of it you just simply don't. Where you are just like oh, purged. You purged it. It's like weird. I guess I don't feel that way anymore. I just don't need it anymore, I guess. Like I just took that weird outfit off and it was full of all this weird stuff and I went through it all and I don't need to go through any more of it. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay, show me what else, what else, what else, what else. Because you are really, I mean, I am pushing you to the limits. Like, you are really exhausted here. And I just say, are you done yet? Are you done yet? You want to go to another one of these places where we're going to find you and all these demented versions, like hurting yourself, cutting yourself into pieces, cutting you down, t torturing you. Um, you're in pain, you can't breathe, you're choking on things. Like, this is you hurting yourself. You gotta love yourself. Do you love yourself? I gotta hear it from deep down inside, by the way. So at the surface, you can say, I freaking do love myself. I swear to God, I love myself. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's okay. Trust me. Like we're a totally vast universe and inside, like at the mind's level, like we're, we're praying, we're positive affirmations, but why do I feel this way? We had to keep going inside to find those parts of ourselves. So <laughs> we just, it just is what it is. Okay. So I'm going to listen to your inner you. And here, if your inner you loves itself, okay? Do you love yourself? Tell me. Let's see. I say when you, when you, 
how do I want to put this? I'm, I'm going to put it this way. I'm showing this inner you, uh, all these images and everything we've seen so far. And I'm saying, is that you loving yourself? He's, he's paused. He's in, in meditation right now. He's looking for something. He himself is silent in a dark place looking for a certain ripple or vibration. I say let's try, let's try this again. I want you to open the door in front of you and I want you to tell me who is on the other side. You say it's me on the other side. You say which you. It's, it's not necessarily you. It's What's interesting about how you put this is that it's a really, really good friend of yours and so good of a friend that um, in a way you complete each other like soulmates and there's like a beautiful balance to your reflection when you look into the eyes of this friend. This is a like an alien being, okay? a very weird looking being like it it's very odd like it it's almost like it has a very long nose that is pink and red and orange and its skin is different shades of really like pale pink and then intense orange and red um and it has different patches of this on its skin And it's quiet. It doesn't talk a lot. And when it says something, it doesn't speak like our kind of language. It's almost like, you know how guinea pigs make like cute little noises? It's almost like they make kind of fluttering noises to communicate. Like popping and fluttering like cute little noises in a way. And that's how they, they're very um, compassionate, very sensitive. Um, they're very sensitive and there's a lot of touching involved because they, um, there's a lot of love being shared, like hugs and um, just even being close to one another. This is so different than what you are going to get here on earth. And if this lifetime is so familiar and so meaningful to your soul, you carry that with you in your heart. So imagine a life like that in another part of the universe with a beautiful race of beings. Um, and now how is that going to feel? Like how is that going to parallel what the experience can be like here? And he he's coming through the doorway. And I will say there's something very familiar about his soul frequency. It's very close to the same sound as yours, but it's not. It's almost like your twin brothers in a way. Um, very close. And he just sits and he's silent and he just, it's almost like when he sits still and he closes his eyes, um, these, this really pale pink and the other colors... It's almost like um, they start to shift colors and um, I feel like this, I don't know if he's releasing kind of a scent from his skin. Um, there's also like a vibrational sound that I hear and you start to be enveloped in this, um, it's a generating of energy, um, of scent, um, of color and it's very calming. It's very calming. And what's interesting is we would define these kind of alien beings as more more like an animal um, than 
a human like do we see apes as um human beings or do we see them as animals you know like uh, monkeys and things like um are dolphins um you know people say dolphins are sentient beings other people are going to say dolphins are you know they're like animals you know these beings are very much so like a dolphin or an ape like there's um or an elephant even like um animals that have that are very sensitive very nurturing very supportive of each other um very connected to family and they have techniques of of just love and support it's because there's not this quest to understand oneself in this um, race um, it's like you just are present with your body and your place and your instinctive um, desire to share love and support and just feel close to each other when you need to feel close. And, and there's always openness to that. And I start to see a black a shadow is kind of leaving your body and it's stinky smelling. And this being it continues to share this energy and I start to see more of these beings appearing here, okay? And they're all surrounding you and uh, this vibration becomes more intense. So it's it's like a very, it's a very kind of vibrational sound. It's not like the, the noises that they make. It's more like, I don't know if it's generated from... I mean, he's releasing energy into the air. Like, I can feel the energy he's releasing and there's a scent to it. Um, and there seemed to be a vibrational sound in the midst of it. And as all of these join together, it's like this vibrational deep, like it could even call it the ohm noise, you know? Like, it's a really low vibrational, like, beautiful sound. And it just kind of goes through your old being. It makes you feel, um, like, Everything's getting saturated in it. You can't run away from it. You can't escape it. All you can do is be, just receive it. And you don't, it's like, don't run away from it. And you don't want to run away from it. And you recognize you're familiar with this soul, this being, this twin brother, um, it's not like twin flames. It's more like um, very, very balanced and very close to the same pattern of, of, of soul energy. Slight nuances, slight, di slight differentiations to each other, but very familiar. It's so healing for you. It's like a beautiful part of the mirror of who you are. It's helping because the soul is so close to you that um, it's almost like it reminds you of who you are when you are in balance. And you start to cry and you don't want this being to leave and you don't want any of these beings to leave because you don't want to go back to what you just were doing <laughs> and they aren't going to. They're here in this deep place within, deep dark place within yourself. They're here to support you. They're here to help you. It's interesting. I'm being introduced to another scene, okay? I want you to know that that is still happening where you're receiving those healing vibes from those beings. Um, they call them a tribe, okay? A tribe of beings, but they're kind of more like an animal type feel like elephants or dolphins or apes or something. Um, they're very in tune with their with their bodies. They're very in tune with their... Um, calling or instinct and their instinct is very sensitive and loving very natural that's still taking place okay and I feel like um let me just let me just listen okay
that spider is the, the tunnel the spider at the beginning there's more to this but i want to make sure that it's just not encouraging us like it's pulling us into a trap you know because um it could be taking us out of a healing place and it can't because you're going to be healing with those beings for as long as it takes okay So I need to listen and, and really hear the sounds because you have have created a lot of um, self-imprisonment, okay? And it's very clever and it's hard to tell. Um, but I remind you that everything is you. So let's just see the spider as you. Let's see the tunnel as you. Let's see the darkness as you. How do we want to face you right now in these ways, in these forms? And I say, is this the right path or is there another path? Let's try the doorway again. Let's open a door and let's see what's on the other side. What is it? You say love. And I say, I want you to ask love on the other side. Um, what its opinion is about the spider and the tunnel, if we need to explore that or if we can just call that um, a distraction. Love says to go be with your people and to let that go. Let that structure or those ideas, those concepts, let those go. And um, love is sort of um, revealing itself, kind of like uh, it's sa a sacred geometry. It has consciousness. Um, it's almost like pulling everything that's from that space inside of itself and forming it into a cube shape. And it's wanting you to take the cube and, and just place it in the light of the sun. And to let that energy go. There's nothing else you need to find there because you're just going to find more of the same thing. You need to expose yourself to this. Your friends, your family, your tribe. But you need to be nurtured and tended to. And I'm transforming this from a really, like a dark, deep place inside yourself. I'm removing that darkness. And so you can see all the beings that are actually here. And then we're going to fill it with flowers and butterflies and kind of a, an alternate looking planet. <laughs> like um, amazing, different looking trees and, and bushes and vines and, and plants growing different feel to the air and the taste of the water but it's all very nurturing very natural very um, familiar very healthy very um, amazing and pure and fresh and clean You're just healing right now. Let's, I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna really amplify a continuation of this time for you and for you to really feel it here, uh, here right now for your physical body, your soul, for emotional body, like all your chakras, like, let's just let this amplify, let, let's let this flow, let's let this attune you to this energy um, and keep um, holding you in this place of vibrational love and support um, with familiar friends, soulmates, 
um, familiar faces, familiar memories that are full of love and what could feel like you're even yourself loving yourself this time. Yourself caring about yourself. We're, that's the next step. I'm actually going to put, um, like, I really am, I really want to hold you in this space for as long as you can vibrationally stay, okay? Um, and I don't want there to be any interference with that, um, from anywhere, any aspect within and outside of yourself. Like, I really want you to maintain the vibe for a while, okay? And so I'm, I'm putting you into a very safe space. Um, everything that we're seeing, that you're feeling, that you're connecting with is in a safe space that is protected. Um, and I'm just coating it with golden light and golden energy. And the only thing that it can enter into this space is the same high vibrational energy that is within this space. Anything less than that vibration cannot even come near it. No ideas, no influences, no inspirations, no manipulations, nothing. Because it can only be pure energy that is of golden, high vibrational, pure love um, and caring light. And this is a breathable space, so it can inhale and exhale. It can be at peace, it can breathe, it can relax. It has time to heal, to be nurtured. It feels good. I will tell you that life is always like a revolving door. So this is the next step, okay? And just being present in this energy is the next step. And that the revolving door will revolve and you'll be introduced to the next thing. And the next thing could be a test. It could be a challenge. Um, so you got to decide where you're going to go with that. Um, but this is, this is amazing. This is really good. Really, really good. Okay. Is there anything else? Any other advice or tips, suggestions, anything? This is it for right now. This is all they want to share. And I will say that was a lot of energy work and I put through you through a lot to get to the end of this. Um, the you that's deep down inside. You've had to face a lot of difficult aspects of yourself so we could transform it. We could see it for what it is inside yourself. That's what alters the flow of that grip, that program that kind of holds you into those painful places, vibrational places inside yourself. So the more we can look at it and let it go and welcome in this lo these loving beings to support you because that you can't be a lone ranger on on this path. You've got to be present with all the love that's here to support you. And that too influences you to continue to love yourself at all levels of yourself, not just in your mind, but in all the parts of you that are here working through this life with you, you know? So Thank you so, so much for the opportunity to help you and thank you for sharing and thank you for introducing me to what you're going through. So it's just like, it's nice to connect with other people that, you know, that I, we're kind of sharing similar lessons. We're going through similar life challenges, you know, um, so I'm happy to help you. Um, for those watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Um, I also have two of the YouTube channels, so you can check me out at Abby Normal and Zodiac Energy Readings. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. Okay, have a wonderful day, everybody.